Hi guys and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping in today's Fish Fan Friday. I am going to talk about Indian almond leaves, the tannins that they release into the water and why they're beneficial and how to get the most tannins out of a single leaf. For those of you guys that have bought fetas from me, I always ship an Indian almond leaf with every purchase and I kind of fold it up so you get an entire almond leaf and an entire one almond leaf of this size and this one's a little folded sometimes if you order them online they're not a lot nicer looking but this one's a little derpy you can get an entire bottle of tannins out of one leaf now i've already been using this for my jars and it's been used up and of course i labeled it indian almond leaf just in case so no one drinks this by accident but i can get this much tannins out of one leaf which is really great if you have just a normal fish tank for your fish and want to be adding a little bit of Indian almond leaf tannins every time after you do a water change so your fish can benefit from the lower pH, the antibacterial properties of the Indian almond leaves. It definitely improves the health of your betta fish. If you're a breeder, you want to make this stuff in bulk because that way you can pour it into your jars. As you can see, I have two jars right here with two fish that I believe are already sold. I don't know if this girl is sold yet, I don't remember, but I know he is going to a new home next week. And for those of you that are new to this channel, uh, these are the fish that I bred. They're only in these jars temporarily before they're sold to their new homes where they're going to have entire aquariums for themselves. And once when they were very little, they actually grew up in a tank. So they weren't in here forever. I'm not a big fan of keeping your fish in jars. I think temporarily when you're a breeder, it's a must because you have to separate a lot of fish. As you can see, I have more fish back there. But long term, I don't think it's good to keep your fish in a small environment. So with that disclaimer, let's talk about the Indian almond leaves and what I do. So I'm going to move these guys back. So the easiest way, and I've tried a couple different methods. Some people will just crush up the Indian almond leaf and just drop it in. So you can drop the whole thing in when you're breeding, or you can drop smaller pieces uh, after water changes. But if you really want to get a lot, the best thing to do is get a jar. This jar is kind of dirty. That's what I use for my Indian almond leaves. So you get your jar, and then you fold up your element, Indian almond leaf, also known as the katapa leaf, and just put it in like this, it's in there, and then you take hot boiling water, I already have water I pre-boiled right here, and you pour it on top of your leaf and you fill this up, I fill it up all the way, and what I do is I wait for it to cool down. Now, if you're in a hurry and really want a lot of Indian almond leaves, in about half an hour to an hour this should cool down and you after that will be able to uh, take some of the Indian almond leaves out now as you can see right after pouring the water this is already starting to change color so this works <clears throat> really quickly but if you really want to get the most out of one leaf and you know get stuff that is super dark like this I mean look how dark this is super super dark and filled with tannins if you want that I recommend leaving this overnight so leave this to sit overnight. The hot water will help the tannins leach out. And the next day you should have this whole jar full of dark, dark water that you can use to fill up your container. Now, in regards to how much you add to your tank, with the jars, I just kind of eyeball it and I pour in about an ounce of Indian, um, Indian almond leaf extract into the jars. Now I do want to add more into the jars because I'm going to set this actually, oh it's hot. Uh, scooch it over. There we go. I was using my nails so I don't have to touch it. <laughs> but you want to add more to beta jars because even if you're doing water changes every day or at most every other day, you shouldn't really be with these kind of small jars, you really shouldn't be having your fish in the water for any more than two days. That would really kind of be pushing it, especially if you're feeding them very well. So when you do that, the pH will be lowered, the ammonia will be less toxic, so it'll be a lot healthier for your fish. Now, if you are adding tannins to your aquarium, you don't have to add as much. I think that anywhere from 
two ounces to three ounces to a uh, 10 gallon or a 20 gallon could be just enough. If you are breeding, of course, you want to add a lot more. So let's say if I had a breeding uh, tank that is five gallons, uh, I would probably add as much as even, I would say, five or six ounces of this stuff, if not more. If your fish is sick, I would also add more of your Indian almond leaf tannins. Uh, but normally you don't have to use a lot and uh, if you even get one leaf, you can get a lot of this and this should last you a long time, at least a minimum, I would say a few months if you're only adding a little bit to your tank at a time so your fish can benefit. And as you can see in the background, see how quickly my water is getting darker? So another method you can do is you can actually put it in a pot and boil it, but I prefer just putting it in here and leaving it. Uh, that way I don't have to use any of my cooking pots for my fish stuff. That way it's super easy too because it only takes, you know, five seconds. I just put in the leaves, pour the water, and then leave it alone. So this is the maintenance free way. And then you can store it in a container. I keep my container open. Uh, I don't think it makes a difference if you open or close it. Just make sure to label it so no one drinks it by accident. If they do, in theory, they shouldn't die. <laughs> because this is kind of like tea, very similar to tea, very, very concentrated and probably nasty tasting tea, because this is uh, this is kind of like leaving your tea to seep overnight and in, in a higher concentration. Now these leaves are not human food grade, so they aren't handled the same way your leaves from your tea are, so I wouldn't recommend experimenting and making tea. I would say don't do it, because you know you don't know exactly where they're sourced, so they're not exactly human grade but they should be uh, good enough for your bettas. Now afterwards, you can put the Indian almond leaves into your fish tank if you want. I noticed that snails and shrimp definitely enjoy eating them. I don't have shrimp, but I know other shrimp keepers uh, will add this to their shrimp tank. So you can do that, snails will eat them, or you can just add them to your tank if you want your tank to look really pretty without making your tank look too dark with too many tannins all at once. So that's kind of my uh, a little different fish fan Friday than usual but you guys were asking about you know what to do with Indian almond leaves and in my opinion more people should be using them they should be more known in the hobby I mean a lot of breeders know about them but a lot of average pet owners don't and I'm, I'm surprised that average pet fish yeah I can't wear it average fish stores don't carry these leaves. Some more privately owned aquarium stores will. So you can check your local fish store to see if they have Indian almond leaves. If you buy a fish from me, I will always include an Indian almond leaf. If you need an extra leaf, just let me know. Uh, I'll give you some extra. I also have a link to Amazon from one company that I've bought leaves from before and their leaves are actually really pretty looking. So I'll link that down below. You can also find the leaves on eBay and I think you can probably find them on, on wholesale sites as well. Uh, keep in mind they're either called Indian almond leaves or katapa leaves. Uh, if you're really into experimenting with trying out different leaves, I would also recommend buying some banana leaves. That's something I would like to get as well. Uh, a lot of people have been using the combo of Indian almond leaves and banana leaves and that turned out to be really good for the fish. I haven't tried banana leaves yet, but I would like to in the future. So that's kind of my video of me talking and showing you my fishies. Just really quick before I end this video, all these fish in the back, all of the metallics, it's hard to see them because of the tannins, they are all available for sale, already three have been sold, so go to my website Creative Pet Keeping and go under the store section and you will be able to buy a fish while they're still available. So that's kind of it. Also, I guess I should explain what's going on here. It is getting a little colder here. Uh, my place is still very warm, so I'm not too worried, but all my younger koi that I'm, the, the very few, I don't have much koi left, I have a few females, but all of the ones uh, that I do that are, have that are little and need to grow out. I actually have them in the Tupperware container. They're in water and there's a heater in there. So it's actually heating the jars over there. I have done uh, previous videos on how to heat uh, multiple jars 
with water. It's a good emergency way or a DIY way to do things. So I just figured I would add that in the end. So I think on that note, I am gonna go. Bye!